tonight. Join Ursula Carlson, Tom Sainsbury, Pax Asadi, Laura Daniel and Vaughn Smith as we look back on the year and ask, have you been paying attention? And now, here's your host, Hayley Sproul. Welcome to Have You Been Paying Attention's Christmas Special. I have gathered some of our finest comedians to take a look back at the year in news in a Christmas party that, unlike Boris Johnson's, is socially distanced. <laughs> Later tonight we'll be joined by our guest quiz masters, the winner of Celebrity Treasure Island, Chris Parker, Master Chef Australia's Melissa Leong, and later by our most successful Olympian, Lisa Carrington. But to Otahine, let's say hello to our Christmas quizzes. She is the gift that keeps on giving. Why, it's Ursula Carlson. Matamata's Christmas angel, Tom Sainsbury. He's frickin' festive, bro, it's Pax Asadi. The karaoke Christmas queen herself, Laura Daniel. And if you don't leave out milk and cookies for him, he gets all grumpy, it's Vaughn Smith. <laughs> <laughs> no, my hooky, my everyone, lovely to see you all. Tom, welcome back to the show, great to have you. Thanks for having me, Hayley. Are you gearing up for the Christmas season? Yes, cooking so much figgy pudding. I've got eggnog, you know, on the boil. Now, this is huge news. You've actually had the privilege of meeting Santa before when you were I slightly have. younger. Yep. Oh. oh. <laughs> Look at you. What a sweet looking boy. What happened? I know. The ravages of time. I used to be blonde. Yeah, I know. Look at you. You're gorgeous. I have to say, you, you do look a little bit sort of. Damien energy, a little yeah. bit spooky, and that is only yeah. supported by the fact that if you look really closely on the photo of Santa, you've put all these pinholes through his face. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. He didn't give me what I wanted that year. What can I say? <laughs> he got you a Nintendo, and you wanted a Sega. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Outrageous. Uh, Laura, great to have you back on the show. Ho ho ho, Haley. All right, well, don't go calling me names straight out the gate. Uh, <laughs> Laura, obviously looking behind you, you're getting into the festive spirit. You like to dress up. Absolutely, we all do in our house, and I think the number one fashion icon in our house is actually um, my cat, Martin. Oh, Martin. Look at the legs yes. on him. Look at the pins I on him. I know. <laughs> what a fashion. What an icon. He's so... And here he is right now. Look. <gasps> oh, hello, Martin. That's a face for television, isn't it? Oh, he's absolutely oh. hating being picked up. Look. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, all right, this is a family-friendly show. Uh, OK, Laura, oh, Laura, yeah, I think we're good. Don't make out with your cat. <laughs> I think we've seen enough of the cat, Laura. All right, team, it is time to take a look back at the biggest news of the year. Hands on buzzers, let's get into it. We kicked off 2021 with some celebrations. The viaduct around me here is so crammed with fans, there's been an urgent call from the council for people to stay away. What had just happened? Laura. Uh, Danny Doolin started doing $3 pints. <laughs> <laughs> OK, good to know, actually. Tom? We won the America's Cup. We did indeed. Team New Zealand won the America's Cup. Points to you, and honestly, heaps of points to them. To the US, and Donald Trump released this message in January. So go home. We love you. You're very special. Who was he talking to, Vaughan? That was his um, early approach to deal with the Delta variant. <laughs> <laughs> Kill it with kindness. <laughs> Did not work. Did not work. Pax? No, it was the it was the lovely, lovely people that stormed the Capitol. It was his supporters who stormed the US Capitol building January 6th. After Rawiri Waititi took a stand in February, the New Zealand parliamentary dress code will no longer include what, Vaughan? Shoes, Hayley, we're a Jandals, Barefoot or Crocs friendly <laughs> parliament now. I'm sure we would be, uh, but not quite what has been banned. Ursula? Uh, is it ties for men? It is it ties. They were previously and... mandatory. Ten points to you. It was a big occasion for the pontiff in March. It is a trip full of symbolism, full of jeopardy, but it's one Francis was determined to make. Where was he arriving, Laura? Um, his in-laws for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite what that entrance is for, Pax. No, it's a Bali trip with the boys. It's not, not quite where he was flying to, Tom. He was going to Iraq, was he? He was going to Iraq, his first ever papal visit there. This image captivated the world this year. What are we looking at, Laura? Oh, Hayley, that is definitely my boyfriend once again butchering a three-point turn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this person really did do that, but uh, not quite the info I need. Ursula? Um, no, the captain of that ship tried to parallel park it in a sandstorm and got stuck in the middle of the Suez Canal. Yeah, not quite sure how they got in there, but yes, it is the ever-given ship stuck in the Suez Canal. Caused a right ruckus, didn't it? 
Her Majesty had a big day in June. What is going on there, uh, Ursula? She uh, mourned a couple of months after her husband died and joined Tinder and to celebrate she got a cake. <laughs> no, she's not <laughs> celebrating uh, getting a boyfriend from Tinder, Vaughan. She's celebrating her 95th birthday, Hayley. She's cutting her cake there, swords upside down, and that's why she doesn't have three of her fingers anymore. <laughs> <laughs> she is cutting her 95th birthday cake with a ceremonial sword. Little did she know, actually, a very healthy Prince Philip was hiding in there. <laughs> 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 Simon Dallow had a big scoop in July. The pastry ceiling has been broken. How was the pastry ceiling broken, Tom? By four and twenty blackbirds. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite what he was reporting on there. Laura. Uh, would you believe it? A woman won the Supreme Pie Award, and that was great for the judges because it meant they only had to pay her 70 cents to the dollar. In pie <laughs> <money>. <laughs> it all worked out in the wash. Yes, a woman won the Supreme Pie Award for the first time. So Heap Long of Euro Patisserie took the crown with her steak and cheese creation. Delicious. Mm. Young Kiwi Ivy Smith went viral around the world this year for doing what? Tom, do you remember? Uh, she was contesting the National Party leadership, wasn't she? <laughs> Honestly, she might soon, Ursula. She saw a goat outside and obviously repeated what an adult had said before, uh, and it was a, a little bit uh, colourful language. A little hated. bit colourful. Let's have a look. A f***ing goat outside. It's just a goat. No, it's a f***ing goat. <laughs> <laughs> That, I mean, it sort of makes me want to have children. That is one of the only kids that makes me want to have oh, a child. Oh, it's not worth it, Hayley, trust me. OK, thank you. <laughs> and it's gone again. <laughs> August 17th was a major date for New Zealand. What happened, Tom? Countdown started selling its Christmas merch. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it felt like it, but not, uh, not why it was such a major date. Pax? No, Hayley, that's when we felt the power of the big D. Delta. Wow, OK, easy now. <laughs> yes, it is when the country moved into alert level four after Delta was discovered in the community, and luckily it's gone just as we planned. Level four will be for initial period of three days. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Ten points to Jacinda for a good joke. Uh, yeah, ten points to Jacinda. New national leader Christopher Luxon got a grilling from Jack Tame. Is that weird? Um, I, I guess it could be, you know, we, we, we did used to talk in my former life, but um, we haven't spoken since I've become an MP. Who hasn't he spoken to? Tom? His toupee maker. <laughs> <laughs> hasn't been able to get in touch with them, but he's working on it, Ursula. No, he uh, hasn't spoken to Jacinda because she asked him for an upgrade on a ticket and he, <laughs> he didn't want to... Didn't want a bar of it. I don't think that's why they haven't spoken, but no, he hadn't spoken to, to Jacinda Ardern since becoming an MP. Points are yours, Ursh. On November 7, what officially became legal in Aotearoa? Pax. It's the five second rule. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's always been law, Ursula. Oh, okay. No, it's uh, exciting enough. Euthanasia. I've got a list here, Hayley. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not quite how it's going to work, but yes, euthanasia became legal. Moving along, the Prime Minister went viral in November when what happened on a Facebook Live? Pax. Dr Ashley Bloomfield walked in the back of shot wearing nothing but a towel. <laughs> oh. How Imagine. dare you. I, I would it. love it. I wish that's what happened, but it's not. Tom? Nev was talking in the next... Like, you could hear Nev talking to her. Yeah, she was interrupted by her daughter, Nev. Take a look. You'll see that great certainty for business. You're meant to be in bed, darling. <laughs> <laughs> it's bedtime, darling. Pop back to bed. I'll come and see you in a second. We all know when Jacinda says just in a second, she means 107 days. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, tell me once. <laughs> that was not her child. If your child gets out of bed when you've already put them in bed, there's more swear words in there. Yeah. yeah. That, that was Clark. Oh, that was yeah. Clark that got her. Yeah, it was Clark. You meant to be in bed, darling. <laughs> 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 All right, guys, it's time for a break. We'll be right back with our first guest quizmaster, Christmas Parker. Akawaki nai.
from 11.59 tonight, Auckland is moving to alert level 3. Auckland will drop to alert level 2. Alert level 3. Level 2. Level 3. 4. 3. 2. 1. What's happening? Let's find out. Judith Collins is underlining her future as the leader of the National Party. I am staying. Judith Collins has lost the leadership of the National Party. I've no recollection of that. You're all liars. The All Blacks have been donning their underdacks. So once again, the number one team in the world. Good times. Ireland is still celebrating after its latest victory over the All Blacks. Bad times. Just good life. The housing market is so unaffordable. The crisis is being blamed on a bunch of boring bureaucrats who have no imagination. They could use a giant coin to pay. Yes, they can. The finance minister says KFC isn't disappearing <laughs> just yet. Welcome back to Have You Been Paying Attention's Christmas special. We're taking a look back at the biggest stories of the year. Guys, it's time to find out whether or not Santa has a VIP pass to the lounge. It's showbiz. <laughs> Hands on buzzers, guys. Here we go. People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive for 2021 was announced at the start of the month. Who was it? Tom? Some bearded dude on ZM. <laughs> Stop flirting, you two. Ursula? No, Gen X rises again. It's Paul Rudd. It is Paul Rudd. I agree. Laura, you agree? Uh, no, I was going to say Mark Richardson. <laughs> OK, well, that's a personal <laughs> preference there, Vaughan. Wait, did you say most sexist man alive? No, sexiest, sorry. <laughs> oh, OK, <laughs> my bad. No, 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 that's my bad. I should have been clearer there. Sexiest. <laughs> Adele made headlines by doing what in just three days? Laura? Putting all the weight back on. <laughs> <laughs> I could do that. I could do that in three days. No sweat. Uh, Pax. Her album 30 sold more copies than any other album this year. Yeah, indeed. That's entirely correct. Ten points to you. Britney Spears had a very good day on November 12th. What happened? Vaughan. Uh, she ended the conservatorship, right? Like, she's not under her dad and brothers yeah. and uncles and everybody else's control anymore. Brittany is officially hashtag freed after years of being controlled by her family. Live your best life, girl. Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck have had gossip mags buzzing all year. Why? <laughs> Ursula. It is actually quite disgusting. Their public display of affection has just grossed me out. They're a couple again. They are. They got back together 17 years after they broke off their engagement. Congratulations. And let that be a warning to everyone. Your ex could come back. <laughs> it's great news for all the um, doctor's waiting rooms because they can just keep the same magazines that they have had the whole time. <laughs> Still relevant. Still relevant. There was bad news for Kiwi Lord of the Rings fans in August. What was it? Pax? The television show that was getting made here, the Lord of the Rings television show, got moved from here to the UK. Yeah, moved from Aotearoa to the UK. Vaughan? Big international uh, companies are making a real hobbit out of doing that to our film industry. Oh. <laughs> you could say them moving Lord of the Rings off shore is a little bit awkward for us. <laughs> it's a good one. It That's does mean, not good. It does mean nationally we're going to make Lego less money. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think they've gone there to make it cheaper because they Bill Blue their budget. <laughs> Bill Blue? That's not as Yeah, it was... looks highly pleased. They went and <laughs> Bill Blue their budget. Nah. <laughs> highly please take charge. Take charge. All right, team, it's time to welcome our first guest, Quizmaster. He's one of New Zealand's favourite comedians and he just won Celebrity Treasure Island. Hello, our very good friend, Chris Parker. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Chris, uh, you have had a fantastic year, an absolutely massive year. How are you feeling as you're winding down for Christmas? Um, honestly, it's been a great year, fabulous year. I mean, a lot has happened, and it's all happened within the four walls of my house, can you believe it? I know. So I'm actually excited just to walk around the street and just not shake hands with the people of New Zealand. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I mean, you're no stranger to Christmas. Uh, truth be known, you were actually a mall Santa for a while. I was, yes. Um, there we are. <laughs> there we are. So you had some very special guests. Getting a lovely free photo at Harvey Norman. I was the Harvey Norman Santa for 2011, 2012. So if you were there, have a look at your Santa because he's actually 24 years old and questioning <laughs> his sexuality. <laughs> you must be the youngest 
skinniest Santa of all New Zealand history. I reckon, yeah. I mean, it was a really weird job. The training was so surreal. I went into this, like, big room of all the mall Santas of New Zealand, and they'd been doing it for about 20 years and learned all the hot tips. You'll notice that Santa's always wearing white gloves and they're always visible in a photo. Oh, there you go. Good to know. Uh, Chris, let's talk Celebrity Treasure Island because it was it was an amazing season. You played the game incredibly, but I have to say, watching that finale, it did not feel like you were going to win. How close? <laughs> it didn't for so long. Everyone was like, OK, well, it's not Chris's, it's not Chris's. And then you just came out there at the end. How close were you during that last fight to giving up? Well, I kind of went in thinking, I've lost it. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> never, never going to win. But I thought, let's just go out strong with a good positive attitude. And that could be like a good role model moment. Well done to you, Chris. Uh, and another big year ahead. <sighs> another yeah, big... No, don't rest easy now because you're going to hit the road next year with your new show, Gentleman. Uh, you're going to be touring yes. around New Zealand. Tell us what the show's about. Well, I figured so many people haven't seen my comedy because they may have met me during Celebrity Treasure Island. So it's my greatest hits. It's like now that's what I call Chris Parker volume one. So just all my best <laughs> comedy from over the years. What more could you want from a show? Chris, it's a delight to have you in the uh, guest quiz master seat. Are you ready to ask the hottest reality TV questions from 2021? I am, Hayley. I'm excited to debut my um, announcer voice. Oh, OK. I look forward to hearing it. Take it away. <clears throat> Here we go. Hands on buzzers. <laughs> Is that what you say, Hayley? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. hands on buzzers, yeah. <laughs> OK, the first season of Drag Race Down Under, or as I call it, the Gay Olympics, was finished <laughs> in May and was won by which Kiwi drag queen? Ooh, Pax. Uh, Sylvia Park. <laughs> that is a, a good name, name, actually. You can, I think you should claim yeah. that one, Pax. Oh, no, Sylvia Park was my drag name. I did drag last year. <laughs> Literally chose that name. You are Sylvia oh. Park. Are you, Pax, you might have to be St Luke's. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be St Luke's Westfield. <laughs> I want to be Lazy Susan. Oh, I like that. Oh, yeah. that's a really good one. It's Ursula? I mean, if I lose this, then they'll take away my card. It's Ketamine. Great. The drag queen Ketamine. Chris, take it away with the next question. Um, in April, America Bachelor Colton Underwood became the first star of the series to what? What did he do, Pax? He was the first um, Bachelor star to not get a HelloFresh deal. <laughs> <laughs> that never happened. Devastating. I can give him my code. Vaughn? As someone who's taken some HelloFresh money, I don't want to make any jokes about HelloFresh. No, Fresh. no, we can't <laughs> on that one. Vaughn? Didn't he come out as gay after the show? Yes, correct. Like, he got the gig and then he came out. Look, <laughs> you know, each to their own. Takes a bit of time sometimes. <laughs> it takes a bit of time indeed. It takes 25 women in, in the space of three weeks to figure out. <laughs> I don't want that. The Great Kiwi Bake Off final had one of the toughest technical bakes ever. <laughs> I've never heard of it, nor have I made it, nor have I seen one. So I have uh, very much flying in the dark. Mmm, what were they asked to bake? Pax. Uh, anything that isn't a European dessert. <laughs> <laughs> they do struggle, Pax. They do struggle. Uh, Laura. Uh, they had to bake a nail file into a cake and successfully free a prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Not quite what the great Kiwi Bake Off finalists had to do, Ursula. No, as a huge fan of the show, Hayley, it's a cassata. Correct, it was a cassata, whatever the hell that is. All right, Chris, your last question, please. OK, and this one actually involves me, if we haven't talked Ooh. about me enough on the show. <laughs> this was big for me on Celebrity Treasure Island. The doink, bro. I got the doink. <laughs> now, what was the doink? All right, we're on earlier tonight, remember, team? What was the doink, Laura? Um, is it like a desert island version of a twink? <laughs> <laughs> they, they put the D in LGBT. <laughs> Not quite the answer, Tom. Look, can I just say, before we get into it, I'm loving the beard, Chris. Always Thank love you. the beard. Oh, yes, yeah. I know you've always been more attracted to me with a beard at <clears> all. <throat> Miss Moore has root. I'm just choking on a popcorn kernel. <laughs> <laughs> He died during the show. <laughs> How did you even oh, it in, in between? Of course, Tom Sainz would to die in the campest way possible. Oh, no, he's crying and dying. Just I couldn't stand all the attention Chris was getting, and he's like, I know what will get me back in <laughs> center stage. My, my death, my death. death. <laughs> 
but that that doink was when you hit the chest. You like my money? It's correct, Tom. When I hit the chest and won $100,000 for Rainbow Youth, my chosen charity. You did indeed. Well done to you, Chris. Chris, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Uh, we'll see you in the new year. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a Merry Christmas. <laughs> you there. Welcome our next guest, Quizmaster. She is a judge on MasterChef Australia, an acclaimed food and travel writer, and a style icon to boot. Beaming in all the way from Aussie. Hello, Melissa Leon. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, everyone. Oh, such a delight to have you on the show. Uh, it goes without saying, I'm a massive fan of yours. That's why I got so dressed up today, Melissa. Oh, goodness. Well, you know, I think I think if I had to judge between you and me, you take the cake. You look amazing. <laughs> take the cake. She's making food <laughs> references already. Yeah. Now, Melissa, Celebrity MasterChef Australia is finally coming to our screens very soon. What can we expect? Oh, look, it is so amazing. It's also kind of disgusting because you have these people that are the best in the world at what they do. And not only are they really talented at their particular field, they're really nice people and they can cook. I mean, it's kind of gross, right? Wow, it, it's too so much. Gross. Makes me Sh angry. Share it around a little bit. Yeah, I know, down. I know. But they look, they really can cook. And I think striving for the charity that they're championing um, just gives you that little extra bit of impetus to kind of push a little harder. And the food mm. is utterly phenomenal. It's, um, I know that people sort of think, oh, they're celebrities, so you must have to be a bit nicer to them. But honestly, <gasps> they blew us away. Uh, and of course, Gordon Ramsay's daughter is one of the contestants is that right that's it tilly ramsey she is phenomenal i at 19 years old i wouldn't be able to look a fully grown adult in the eyes let alone <laughs> <laughs> and she just holds her own in the best possible way and yes she has had some decent training in her time growing up but at the same time she she just she's entirely herself and so what she brings is um is is her own brand of ramsey oh. magic were you a bit scared to critique her just in case she goes rogue like a dad and like, what did you say? <laughs> oh, no. I mean, she, she's totally chill, but Gordon did say don't bother coming home if you lose. Oh. So, oh. <laughs> Good. That's always as bad as coming out and your parents saying that. Anyway. <laughs> uh... Hey, Mel, we have to obviously uh, uh, pull up the fact that you are a style icon. You always look oh. absolutely incredible in real life and on the show. And also you have a real, a real elegance at eating food in those clothes and looking good. How do you do it? Our wardrobe mistress is a very frightening person, so I try not to drop food on myself and that's how I do it. That's how you do it? Because there was a no, rumour circulating joking. that you practise in the mirror. That, yeah, there is this really funny joke that I went along with one time was that someone said, oh, you must, you eat so elegantly, you must practice in front of a mirror. And I, I said, oh, yeah, sure, I definitely do that. And then it became a news article. <laughs> and now I'm that girl who practices eating because obviously don't know where, where does the food go? Obviously. It goes in the mouth hole. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Laura? Uh, yeah, hey, Mel, I've just got a quick food-related question because I'm about to cook dinner after this. So... <laughs> Two-minute noodles. Do you drain the water before you add the flavour sachet or after? Um, I it, well, it depends on whether or not you want soupy noodles or you want dry noodles. So I always like to leave a little bit of the water in there and then use that to kind of help mix the flavour through. Mm. And then always fry it on top because the yolk adds extra richness to the two-minute noodles. Oh, she's fancy. Oh, my God, she's a budget queen and a taste queen. A fancy <laughs> budget <laughs> queen. Eight and nine cent packets of mee goreng with fried, with fried egg on top. Oh. Perfect. Yum. Pax? Uh, as a style icon, what are your thoughts on, on the tuft of chest hair that I'm exposing? <laughs> Uh, it's 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 bloody glorious, really. <laughs> I mean, I celebrate you. You, you probably wouldn't get away with that on MasterChef, though, because no one wants your chest pubes falling into their, yeah, you know, their dish. Yeah, don't call them chest pubes. Yeah, I think they have like a uh, like you know those those. Um, You're saying I called? should put a net on my chest? <laughs> a, hair net, a hair net, but over a chest over net. Here. You could start a whole new fashion trend. Well, Pax is so hairy; he's going to need a pool cover. <laughs> 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 All right, you guys, rain it in and front of us. going to have to crank it over me like this. <laughs> <laughs> get in the cling film and just 
Do you think it's one? Just rap. Yeah, rap that's, a good, that's a good one. Uh, Mel, well, of course, you're beaming in from Australia. So as our international guest, are you ready to ask our contestants some questions about the biggest news stories from around the world? Yeah, absolutely. Let's go. All right, team. Well, I hope you got both your passports. It's time for a trip around the world. All right, Mel, take it away. This herd of elephants in China held the world's attention for most of the year. Why? Tom. They're just really good at public speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite how they held attention there, <laughs> Ursula. No, because they taste like chicken. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Mel, don't laugh at that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Pax. Uh, no, they went on a very long journey and actually caused some damage. Uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much correct. They went on a 500 kilometre, 17 month trek across China, causing about a million bucks worth of damage before turning around and going straight back home. They just went so, home. Yeah. Didn't even... Turns out they're, they're, just, they're just dicks. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let, that, let that be a lesson to everyone who likes to go running or hiking. You just look like a pack of dicks. You just look like a dick. <laughs> uh, Pax, 10 points to you. Mel, next question, please. All right. Here's an interesting scene in a poll from last month. <laughs> What's going on here? Tom. Insert joke about Jetstar. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite the answer we need there. Uh, Ursula. Um, mate, I had a Datsun as my first car and that is what a push start looks like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe a little more info. What do you reckon, Mel? Just a little bit more, I think, Ursh. Did it have engine or tyre difficulty? Tyre difficulty is it. One of the plane's tyres went flat, so the passengers had to exit and help push it. Oh, my God. Isn't that terrible? But usually when I buy a plane ticket, I do not sign up for cardio. I just want to sit, <laughs> you know, yeah. sit down, gin and tonic and happy day. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, Mel, take us away for the next question, please. OK, there were huge celebrations in China in July. <laughs> the occasion? Pax. Uh, that's what I hear in my head after making love to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and do you, do you wave to her afterwards? Yeah, and I go... <laughs> Not quite, Tom. 100 years of the Communist Party. That's right. Uh, they were celebrating 100 years of the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, Mel, next, next question, please. In July, this clip from New Jersey went viral. What happens next? Oh gosh, I've seen this, Laura. Um, they get rear-ended by Jeff Bezos' spaceship. <laughs> 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 Not what happens next on the clip, Tom. A bird flies into her face. It's very dramatic. That is correct. Take a look. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> she's so the girl who doesn't get the bird to her face is absolutely screaming, and she's just like, "I oh, know." <laughs> uh, Mel, such a pleasure to have you on the show, and of course, you can catch Mel on Celebrity MasterChef Australia hitting TVNZ two December 29th. Hi there, Mel. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for having me. We'll be right back with Lisa Carrington, Akuakine. the night before Christmas, and old Hayley Sproul was writing quiz questions like a studious owl. She'd spent every night and every day missing a show called HYBPA. All of the comedians were snug in their beds. With all their favourite memories inside their heads. The best bits of have you been paying attention? Famous guests, silly games, and topical news-based questions. So she put out the word and said, Comics Assemble. We're doing a surprise Christmas quiz special. And I heard her exclaim as she drove out of sight. I'm on my phone. Say the line. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Well, welcome back to Happy 
have you been paying attention? And of course, a very Merry Christmas to you. It is time to meet our next guest quiz master. She is a five-time Olympic gold medalist. Lisa Carrington, welcome to the show. Yeah. a pleasure to have you here. I'm somewhat starstruck. It has been just a massive year for you. First of all, congratulations on Tokyo. Yeah, thank you. I mean, um, it's uh, it's been a little while now and uh, being in lockdown this whole time, it kind of feels like a world away. Yeah, not much of a celebration, I'm sure. Of course, you added three gold medals to your already impressive kitty, making you our most successful Olympian Ever. How does that feel, Lisa? Uh, crazy. I don't think um, it's something, you know, when you first start sport, you don't kind of strive for something like that. But um, it's amazing. I mean, the people that have won Olympic gold medals, um, you know, they're inspirational to me. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know, it's humbling. Wow, indeed. Ursula? Just blown away, Lisa, when you said that's not something you strive for when you start doing sport to, you know, be the best. Like, that's the one thing that's keeping me out of sport, knowing that I won't ever get in. <laughs> I, I strive to be the best yeah. at my sport, Ursula, don't I? You don't have a sport. I do have a I sport. Live. What is your sport? What Marching is your sport? is a sport, Pax It's Asadi. not a sport. <laughs> it's not a okay. sport. Okay, okay, let's clear this up, Hayley. We've come to the end of 2021. Another horror here. Lisa, you are the best sports person in New Zealand. Could you please sort this for us? Is marching a sport, yes or no? Lisa Carrington, over to you. Uh, um... That's a no. Ursula, <laughs> <laughs> <Actually, laughs> you just have to give her a little bit of context, you see. Conclusive. No, it's, it's conclusive. Not a sport, mate. Don't it's embarrass not... a champion national marcher in front of an Olympian. Thank you, Ursula. <laughs> okay, back to Lisa, back to you. Lisa, this is pretty amazing. You've been named the most influential Māori sports personality of the past 30 years. Uh, a pretty amazing title. How does that feel? What does that mean to you? I think, you know, to be able to be uh, that figure for Māori, I think is really, really special. Um, and I guess not until now or recently that I've kind of realised how, you know, uh, my ancestors um, and my grandparents, the people before me, you know, what they've had to go through um, to help me to get to where I am. So mm. I think it's just such a, a special thing and it means a lot to not, you know, not just myself, but, you know, my whole family. I bet it does. Um, I have to ask you, in terms of your legacy, Paris 2024, you coming back for more? You want to add some more? <laughs> Some more medal to that list? Um, I'm making myself available for the doubles. For the doubles? Uh, <laughs> we'll be like this. <laughs> <laughs> With the Olympic cycle, you kind of need to commit as early as possible, really. So, yeah, I'm absolutely keen to go ahead um, towards Paris. You know, I still have to qualify and... You know, it's still you still got to go through selection and all those um, hopes you have to jump through before actually getting to the game. So, Lisa, yeah, I, I, I reckon you'll yeah. be all right. I reckon you'll qualify. <laughs> so that that seems a lot harder than walking, also known as marching. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> we're not going back because we're moving forward in this conversation. All right, Lisa. Well, it's such an honour to have you on the show. Uh, a real pleasure. Are you ready to ask our contestants the best sports questions of 2021? Yeah, so here we go, guys. All right, team, then get your yellow cricket sets out. It's time for sport. OK, Lisa, take it away. In July, Naomi Osaka caused headlines after refusing to do what at the French Open? Tom. Uh, we're a beret. <laughs> <laughs> not, not something they asked her to do, I don't think. Pax? Uh, is it talk to the media, I believe? Yeah, so Pat, you're right. Uh, the organisers threatened to fine her, so she pulled out of the tournament completely. Good for her. She didn't want to do it because she was protecting her own mental health. So I say good for her. Right, back to you, Lisa. Take it away. In March, the Halberg Awards honoured New Zealand's best athletes of the past decade. I took home one of the biggest awards. What was it? Tom. I presume participation. <laughs> <laughs> Might be the biggest award you've received. Uh, it wasn't participation. <laughs> Ursula? How dare you people? She took home, you took home sports women of the decade. 
Wow. Yes, thank you, oh, Ursula. Absolutely, <laughs> round of applause. <laughs> yeah. Of the decade. Far out. Do people call you goat in the boat? Yeah, I mean, I've seen it on social. <laughs> goat in the boat. <laughs> start, you should start calling yourself that. Answer your phone like that, goat in the boat. <laughs> <laughs> and take it away, Lisa, next question. Wellington Phoenix women's team had a major first on December 3rd. What happened? Oh, what happened there, Ursula? Oh, I know this. They they played uh, Western Sydney and they had a nil all draw. Yeah, you got it. Ten points, Ursula. Well done, Ursula. Laura, you're a big Phoenix fan. Sure am. It was their first ever game, and everyone was like, "They're going to do terribly. They've never played before." Rah, 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 and they got a draw, baby. That's undefeated so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's they not were the defeated. Team. They left. <laughs> they left with what they came with. Worse well, than losing. No, actually, they both get one point as they move forward, so. Oh, there you go. Back to you, Lisa. Stunning scenes at the Tour de France in June. The peloton has come to a grinding halt. It is time to assess the damage. So what caused the pileup? Tom? Uh, it was a woman holding up a sign, wasn't it? Yeah, you're correct, Tom. Let's take a look. A Stop. sign. A sign held by a spectator oh. and the crash went all the way across the road. You don't get that on the water, do you, Lisa? No, oh, just maybe rogue swans. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Smack them out of over them, eh? Just piss at them. <laughs> All right, Lisa, next question. A uh, Kiwi squash player, Paul Cole, shocked the world with this in August. So what happened? Tom. Did he squash his ball? <laughs> <laughs> it really sounds like it by that scream, doesn't it? Pax, can you get in there and take the points? Yeah, he won the British Open. Nailed it. That's it. It's his first international title as well. Well done. All right, next question, please, Lise. OK, so Black Cap Ajaz Patel became only the third cricketer ever to do what earlier this month? Tom. Get a girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> nah, still no. Still none of them have a girlfriend. Ursula? So Ajaz took all ten wickets in a game against India. Yeah, that's right. Awesome. All ten wickets in a test innings. That's incredible. Final question, please. Meet Texas radio announcer Jeff Haxton. He went viral in April for doing what during a baseball game? Oh, I've seen this. It's absolutely amazing. Pax? Uh, it is amazing. He got to third base while commentating. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite while he, what he did while he was commentating. Vaughn? He caught a foul ball left-handed, like with his hand backwards... It's, it's, it's beautiful. We can take a look. Pitch. Coming right back at us. Yeah! Oh, Hacks! Oh, so With a bare hand snag. <laughs> My hand hurts so bad right now. <laughs> That's cool, isn't it? That oh. is very cool indeed. Lisa Carrington, such a pleasure to have you on the show. We've got to take a break now, but when we come back, our winner will be crowned. Lisa Haidera and Merry Christmas. Thanks for having me, guys. Kaki Have a good Christmas. See ya. Kaki Time to bring it on home with a round of Rapid Recall. All right, guys, hands on buzzers, start that clock now. New Zealand's 2021 Bird of the Year caused controversy when what was named the winner? Ursula. This bird from Huntley? <laughs> um, no, it wasn't. It wasn't old um, Cassidy from Huntley. Uh, Vaughnie. It wasn't even a bird, Hayley. It was a bat, and that's not a bird. It was a bat, a long-tailed bat, the first time bats have ever been allowed in the competition. Hopefully the last, I say. The Outrageous. noble Kennedy, that gets my vote. <laughs> Good to see Bats PR people doing some work to win back that whole Wuhan situation. <laughs> indeed, yes. indeed, indeed. So cool. The Brazilian so cool. president, Jair Bolsonaro, was admitted to hospital in July with a chronic case of what, Tom Sainsbury? Bookie fever? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite why he was in the Pax. No, it was hiccups. Ridiculous. Yeah, the hiccups. <laughs> Ten points to you. Rihanna received an impressive new title. What was it? Tom. Only girl in the world. <laughs> not quite the title she's claimed. Laura. Bird of the year. <laughs> she's not the bird of the year. More deserving than a bat, though. Pax. Is she, like, national hero of Barbados? She is a national hero of Barbados to celebrate the country becoming an independent 
Republic. It's been a tough 2021 for Bill Gates. What happened? Laura. Oh, he dropped down to third richest man in the world. I know, oh. honestly. And we just want to say our condolences. We've sent a hamper. We're yeah. really feeling for him in these difficult <laughs> yeah, times. Yeah, he really needs it. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Ursula. No, he was lucky enough to get rid of half of his um, wealth by <laughs> divorcing his wife. He did. He got divorced. He lost a lot of money, didn't he, Pax? Yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if the next Windows was called Windows, Life is Meaningless and Women Can't Be Trusted. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to download it. Taylor Swift broke records in November by having the longest ever what? Tom. Conga line? <laughs> <laughs> Not a record she was aiming for. Pax? No, wasn't it like the Billboard number one hit? It was, yeah. Her re-release of All Too Well was well. a 10 minute song. It surpassed the previous longest song of American Pie. Meet Colin Craig Brown, a Waikato farmer who made the headlines this year for discovering what might be the world's biggest what, Vaughan? A tax loophole. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, not quite what he discovered. Tom? Um, it's a huge potato and it's called Doug. It is. Nicknamed Doug the Spud. <laughs> Massive potato. Look at that thing. Tom, I'll give you 10 points for that. Mittens, the famous Wellington cat, made headlines at the end of the year when it was announced he would be doing what? Tom? Attending an anti-vax march. <laughs> <laughs> not he looks quite. it, eh? <laughs> he does look a bit anti-vax. Uh, not the answer on the card here. Ursula? <laughs> no, he's going to move to New Zealand's best city, Auckland. OK, well, debatable, but yes, they're moving up here to <laughs> Auckland, upsetting his tens of thousands of Facebook <laughs> fans. Tough year for Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny. What happened, Laura? Um, oh, he lost a fair and unrigged election. <laughs> <laughs> even worse, even worse than that, uh, Pax. The poor guy was sent to prison and then also a corrective labour camp. Yeah, a labour camp. Just colony. for being the leader of the opposition. Isn't that nuts? 660 became the first ever musicians to do what in April, Pax? Pay their rent. <laughs> they, I mean, I'm sure they're paying their rent at least at the moment, Vaughan. But they played at Eden Park, Hayley. They did, wow. and they're going to do it again in 2022. Last week, the government revealed its action plan to make New Zealand what by 2025? Pax. Uh, relevant. <laughs> How dare you, uh, Laura? 10% hotter. Okay, I'm I'm down to give that a go. Vaughan. Smoke free, Haley. Smoke free by 2025. 43 camels in a Saudi Arabian camel beauty pageant were disqualified just last week. What for? Pax. They weren't virgins, Haley. <laughs> Not the issue here. Not the issue at hand, Ursh. No, they were using push-up bras, and that's a performance enhancer, and you're Why? not allowed to do yeah, that. You're sort of in the right territory, Tom. Sleeping with the judges. <laughs> OK. <laughs> we don't want to think too much about that one there, Vaughn. Mm. They had goddamn Botox, hey? <laughs> they did, to artificially enhance their beauty. This image of Bernie Sanders went viral earlier in the year. What was he attending, Tom? A picnic at level 3.7, <laughs> step 3.1, <laughs> Definitely how we all felt there, Laura. Yeah. It was the ice bar in Queenstown, Hayley. <laughs> <laughs> Very similar, but not quite where he is. Pax? No, it was actually Joe Biden's inauguration. It was indeed. Ten points to you, Pax. After divorcing Kanye West, Kim Kardashian was spot... Oh, that sound brings us to the end of the show. Let's check the final leaderboard. And our winner tonight is... Why, it's Miss Ursula Carlson! Yay! Yes! Thank you, Miss Flores strikes again. Congratulations to our winner and thank you to everyone for playing tonight. We'll leave you with this reminder of the need to pay attention when testing Christmas presents live on TV. They go up to 25 miles an hour. They are amazing. Oh boy. And we are out of here. Oh, guys, that is us for the year, but we'll see you next year in 2022. And stay tuned for the Aotearoa Music Awards, where I hear the co host is very gorgeous. That's me. It's going to be a great show. Hi, Merry Christmas, New Zealand. Bye.